I started developing my game at the start of 2023, and after nearly two years of development, not much has changed. This is because of my own bad game design. This journey started as part of a 24 hour challenge for myself. I never intended for this project to be anything more, but something drew me back in. This project started to live in my mind, consuming me, to a point I decided I'm going to turn this into a proper game. I jumped into the first real iteration without any design preparation, just a combination of ideas that had been brewing in my mind. This project has seen countless restarts, yet I'm still committed to it. Whether it's the sunk cost fallacy taking over, or if I truly believe in this project, one way or another, this game will be released. If you've been watching this series, then you'll know the amount of times that I have taken a step back from development to build on the overall idea. For the life cycle of this project, I as a designer and developer have grown. My skills, my knowledge, my raw, unmatched power of game development all have grown, and with that, I forced the project to grow with me. I held myself to a higher standard, and what this meant was revising systems over and over and over again. Systems that players will never know about. But I do. When I first started designing characters, I created a JSON reader to create scriptable objects based off of data that I wrote. There were no original concepts for characters, I was designing them one at a time, and there were two big problems with this. I had a script for every single character that I created, which, granted, I only got to about 8 characters before I decided to pull the plug, but the bigger problem was that with every new character designed, I would have to go through all existing scripts and add extended code to accompany the logic of the new character. Should this character be influenced by this character? Should this character ignore this character? I had a template and filled it out with every necessary piece of data that a character could have in the game. The upgrades, the costs, the names, everything. And when I first did this, I thought it was the coolest implementation and that I was cooking up a storm. However, I was quickly humbled when creating characters spiralled out of control. Before I knew it, I had 20 different scripts all doing the same thing. I had written data for characters that didn't need that data, and I knew that they didn't need it. But for the template to work, it needed to have that data filled. When I realised how unscalable this was, I took a break from developing and started writing my first game design document on this project. I wanted to understand all of my characters before I went into coding it, so that I could find the similarities and know how I can combine them together. I came back to development a few months later, but revised all the existing systems, literally everything in the project, which in hindsight, it might have almost made sense to just start a new project, but I carried on. This took me months, and when I was finally happy with how the redesign went, I started slowly working on some new systems. I work full-time in game development. This project isn't something I can work on every day, or even week, or at times, months go by where I don't touch this project. But it's still on my mind, and whenever I bring the project up again, with new knowledge and with new skills, I find flaws in systems that I created, and I hyperfixate in cleaning it. It's almost like the project doesn't feel good to me if I have a system that isn't 100% scalable and accessible to every use case, even if I have no intention of ever using it. Just recently, I started designing a new interaction system with proper collision detecting, something I had been meaning to do for a while. I hadn't touched the project and finally got around to a new projectile system, with a big shout out to my friend Unpause Games with his incredible 2D projectile tutorial. Coming back to the project after some time off, there were aspects that I just completely forgot about. When I redesigned the character creation system, I created a pseudo dictionary. When the game was running and a character would use an ability for example, it would check through the dictionary and find the associated values needed to be assigned to the projectile. But after not touching the project for a while, I forgot what these values looked like in this pseudo dictionary. And when it came time to creating a new character, I would have to handwrite all these values into the dictionary. And to me, it just didn't feel good enough. This system 
although not perfect, or great, or pretty, had no fundamental flaws. It was just designed badly. Now, I could have just stuck with this because it did everything that I need and will need for this game, but I decided to take time out of the overall progression of the game to fix a system that I, as the developer and designer, deemed broken. I lost a week of working on new features for this new system, on top of all the months it took me to rebuild the last one. So many hours of development are being lost to the perfectionism of a system that a player will never see. It has no impact on the gameplay. It has no impact on the game. So, again, I'm back to designing a more designer-friendly character creation system that takes a bit of inspiration from everything that I've created so far. And after a bit of time, I've just finished redesigning this system. So supposedly I'm back on track. Now, the character creation is built on a sort of drag and drop system. I've created these scriptable objects for every ability or effect I have in the game currently, with the capability to add more if I want. And with the characters, I just give them the ability that I want, simply by dragging in the scriptable object either into their default build or into their upgrade list. Then going into the game, since it's all shared code, the abilities themselves know what they need to look for in terms of the different properties or effects. But even now, I feel like the system isn't perfect yet, and it gets to a point where I feel the need to take a step back from the entire development process to try and think of ways to make it even better, and this has sabotaged my development for this project for too long. While I make these mistakes, and I grow from these mistakes, and while I'm happier that I have fixed the system and feel proud of the current state that it's in, I ultimately don't have anything gameplay-wise to show for it. And I kind of want to bring that up as a point to you if you're designing your own game. It's so easy to get lost in the world of systems and interesting code. But if I, really early on in development, during the actual design phase of this project, had planned better how I want interactions to work or how I want characters to work, then maybe I would be six months further down the line of this project. Maybe I would have an actual playable build to show off. But here I am, almost in an identical spot to where I was 12 months ago, just with cleaner code and slightly better visuals. I still know what I want out of this game, and maybe this video is just to give you guys an update on why I'm all over the place, but my heart, surprisingly, after almost two years, is still pretty committed to this project, even if it's taking way longer than I could have imagined to get it together. At the moment, my timeline looks like this. I've done the game design documents, I've built enough systems to get the project playable, now I'm going to be creating content. All the characters that I had planned, all the enemies that I had planned, all the abilities that I had planned, and all the upgrades that I have planned. And to streamline that process, I'm actually going to create a dummy level editor so that I can test all of this out. And that's what I'll be planning for the next video in this series. Think a sandbox map. You can set anything you want, any way you want, and it'll be a way for me to streamline the testing of all the upgrades and abilities in a way that makes sure it'll always look and feel good in the game. Anyway, a bit of a different devlog today, more of a discussion on how game design or planning can really impact the development of the game itself, but I also hope this is a good lesson for you guys on some mistakes that can happen during development. There's some really good videos on YouTube for good game design or creating game design documents that if you're looking or thinking about starting a project, no matter how big or small, the practice of writing these documents will further your skills and project in so many ways. So I really encourage you to look into those as well. Otherwise, thank you for sticking around and listening to me yap about this. If you have a similar experience or some other knowledge you want to pass on, definitely leave a comment down below. And of course, subscribe for more yapping videos. I'll catch you all in the next video. Take care.